You are listening to an After Dinner Conversation magazine podcast. After Dinner Conversation believes humanity is improved by ethics and morals grounded in philosophical truth, and that truth is discovered through intentional reflection and respectful debate. In order to facilitate this process, we have created a growing series of print books, a monthly short story magazine, and two different podcasts. This podcast, Philosophy Ethics Short Story Audiobooks, provides audiobook recordings of stories that have appeared in our magazine, and our companion podcast, Philosophy Ethics Short Story Discussions, is where we discuss the ethics of the choices made in the stories as a way to model the kinds of discussions we hope you're having about these readings with friends, family, or students. We would love it if you went over to check it out. I'm Roberta, your narrator and story editor at After Dinner Conversation Publishing. Thank you for spending your time listening to our podcast and for reading the magazine. Thank you for supporting us through your magazine subscriptions and through patreon.com slash after dinner conversation. And of course, if you enjoy this audiobook reading, please subscribe to our podcast, share it on social media and suggest it to friends. Today's story is The Freedom Machine, written by Remy Martin and published in our June 2021 magazine. The Freedom Machine by Remy Martin One step closer to freedom, the box read. It's time to say goodbye to the stress of indecision and let your new infinity system make decisions for you. Clinically proven to reduce anxiety, the infinity system improves productivity and always results in the optimum outcome for you. Put your life in the hands of a higher power and find true freedom, the freedom to be yourself. The box had sat unopened on the kitchen counter since its arrival this morning. Kiki sat on the chair in front of it, a lit cigarette between her fingers. A cup of coffee, untouched, had been placed on the worktop beside it some time ago. She didn't know what to do. It seemed to be a recurring feeling she had been experiencing over the last few days, and one she was getting used to. The decision that sat in front of her, however, was a big one. It had the potential of steering her life toward one of two very different outcomes. She didn't want to take it lightly. Her foot tapped on the leg of her chair as she considered her options again and looked back on the last few days leading up to this moment. She had been doing this much more frequently than usual, this tapping, ever since her original affinity had gone offline. She was starting to think she was developing a nervous tick. The cigarette made its way to her lips again, and she inhaled the rich relief of tobacco smoke. She felt entirely unqualified to make such an important decision. Come to think of it, she felt entirely unqualified to make any decision at all. She didn't have the abundance of data that the Infinity system had, or the computing capacity, or even the same insight into her motives. She knew what decisions the Infinity system would recommend. That much was obvious. This just happened to be one decision that it couldn't make for her. Sighing, she slouched back in her chair and let her mind wander back five days to the moment when her system had shut down in the hope that it might give her some perspective, or at least some clue, as to what she should do now. She woke up that morning feeling well-rested, as she usually did. The alarm went off at the opportune time as she crested the wave of unconsciousness and drifted into the lightest part of her sleep cycle, at 7.14 a.m. Her hand fumbled around her bedside table for a minute as she habitually reached for her Infinity Systems earpiece and clipped it in place around the curvature of her ear. Good morning. Finney's familiar voice spoke into her ear. Ready for another optimum day as your best self? Take a few minutes to enjoy being in bed. You have a busy day ahead of you if you want to achieve your highest potential. Kiki did as she was told, enfolding herself back into the warmth of her duvet and nestling her head into the fabric of her pillow. She didn't protest at having to get up soon or worry about what she would have to do that day or how she would organize her time. She had given her life over to a higher power years ago and put her trust in its patient, methodical guidance. She didn't need to be told to go to the toilet or to brush her teeth, these being things she was in the autonomous habit of doing. So the next time Finity spoke to her was in the kitchen, as she was about to start the coffee maker. 
Coffee is scheduled for 10 a.m. today to improve performance, boost serotonin, and prevent a late morning caffeine crash. Kiki stopped in her tracks. Finney was always encouraging her to do healthy things like this. For years before getting the system, she had been trying to quit smoking. Finney made it effortless, slowly weaning her off cigarettes and giving her new routines to follow to replace the habit. She still allowed her the occasional social cigarette, but other than that, Kiki hadn't smoked in two years. And this was the least of it. Before getting the system, she had been nurturing a low-level anxiety that was really starting to blossom. This was one of the things that gave her the impetus to finally try the Infinity System out. Now she never once questioned her place in the world. It was set out before her as clear as day. She never worried that she was wasting her life or not achieving what she should be. These worries were taken care of. She knew if she just followed Finney's advice, she would be in the best possible place for someone of her intelligence and ability, for someone in her circumstances. Sitting down with a healthy breakfast, pre-prepared by Infinity Co., she opened the Infinity app on her smartphone to check the day's schedule. The colorful boxes detailing all the things Finney had planned for her shone before her fingertips. She had the option to edit and reschedule, even delete any of these plans, but she never took advantage of this option. Why not have a quick play on the piano? The voice from her earpiece suggested right on schedule. The recitals are coming up in a week's time, after all. Kiki had been expecting her to suggest just this. She had seen the allocated 20-minute slot on the Infinity app dedicated to playing the piano. It would cement what she had learned the previous evening and took advantage of a fresh mind to optimize her learning ability. As she sat down and began playing, Kiki soon realized, too, that it was exactly what she needed that morning. She practiced with gusto, easily playing sections and refrains that she had struggled with the night before, and strengthening neural pathways in the process, improving her muscle memory. She lost herself in the music as she played, in the rhythms and cadence of the piece, which functioned to uplift her and improve her self-esteem. She ended the 20-minute session feeling very good. That was beautiful, Finney assured her. You deserve a sit-down. Perhaps you'd like to watch the news. Finney knew full well that this was exactly what Kiki wanted. Knowing about the world events helped her to feel grounded, and she got a buzz from the fast pace and flashing imagery of her favorite news channel. Truly outstanding, the anchor was saying as she turned on the television. And these figures have been confirmed by doctors, did you say? That's correct, the man in the blue suit and a sharp jawline replied. Our clinical psychologists down at Infinity Systems HQ have seen an 80% reduction in the symptoms of their patients in cases of generalized anxiety and mild depression. We've seen nothing like it in any other treatment. Am I right in thinking that doctors are considering prescribing it in certain cases? We're still hoping for legislation to be passed. The men carried on in a similar over-emphatic zeal for five minutes, ten, fifteen. Finney didn't usually let her indulge quite this long, but she trusted there was a good reason for it. Soon they were back in the newsroom discussing party politics, a high-profile murder case, a new tax cut for home buyers. Why was she still watching this? Eventually, despite having not been instructed to, she took the earpiece off and examined it. The usual speck of green light that indicated life wasn't illuminated. Finney had turned off. Jumping up without knowing whether it was the optimate course of action, she ran upstairs to grab the charger. She was sure she had charged it last night, but perhaps it hadn't been in range of the electromagnetic charging point. She plugged it in manually now, careful that the metal nib of the charger clicked into place and waited with bated breath for the spark of life to return, and to hear Finney's soothing voice guiding her again. Nothing happened. Kiki didn't know what to do. Usually she would have Finney to direct her in times like these. Taking a deep breath to calm her nerves, she reached into her pocket and opened her phone. At least she could check her schedule on the Infinity app. 
As the software opened, however, she wasn't greeted with the usual clean, user-friendly interface or brightly colored boxes. Instead, she was greeted only with a warning, Infinity System Offline. Oh, no. Unsure it was in her very best interest, she wandered back downstairs feeling dazed and a little breathless. She slumped against the kitchen counter as she wrestled with the decision of what she should do next. A number of options presented themselves to her in the jumbled mess of her mind where usually she would only find one. For years, she had known exactly what path to take, minute by minute, and now she was back to fumbling around in the dark, grasping aimlessly at options. She considered only for a split second ringing the emergency services before realizing how dramatic that sounded. Her instincts told her to switch the television back on. At least there, people knew what they were talking about. People who had it all together. She knew, of course, that this would be wasting time. Precious minutes were passing by her, like untapped resources going to waste. She was struck by an ambiguous guilt, which seemed to weigh down the lining of her gut. There was no higher power left to follow. While she was deliberating, she clicked on the coffee maker, which began whirring in the silence of her kitchen, muffled by the whirring in her head. She sat down in the kitchen chair again. Her mind was pulling her in a hundred different directions, which resulted in her being unable to move toward any one of them. She was paralyzed by possibility. Eventually, the coffee maker clicked off, having made her coffee all over her kitchen work surface, given she hadn't put the container beneath it. She presumed Finney would have suggested she clean it up, but she couldn't know for sure. In any case, she had made her decision. She had decided that she very much needed someone, something else, to make her decisions for her. How do I know it's making the right decision? A middle-aged woman was asking the store clerk, a gangly man with an acne problem. Surely I know myself better than some machine. It's simple, really. Finney here is designed to sift through and logically assess information in ways our brain can't. She can read your vitals and has insight to your brain chemistry, so she can get a good, not yet complete, but good picture of your emotions when you're undertaking tasks. She has access to social media feeds, records, thousands of hours of video of you, and all the information from your smartphone and television and computer about your viewing and user habits. Not only this, but she has all this information for everyone else, too. Even more, if they also have an infinity system, and she's hardwired to know what we want and how to achieve it. It's really a no-brainer. Kiki stepped into the center of the infinity store, sidestepping sleek display stands and ignoring the curved fascia and futuristic furniture that usually would have inspired a sense of awe. Today, she was feeling far too panicked to appreciate the beauty of the place. The gangly man was clearly preoccupied with his sales pitch. Luckily, she was able to catch the eye of another of the clerks, a bored-looking man with gelled black hair. Morning. Welcome to the Infinity Store. I'm a fully trained Infinity Mastermind here to help with any questions or requests you might have. Are you ready to find true freedom? He asked robotically as Kiki approached without looking up from his phone. Er, Kiki didn't know quite how to answer that question. My infinity system went offline this morning. It needs fixing. The clerk put down his phone and leaned across the counter toward her. He looked more interested now. His name tag read Reggie. Broken, he said. Now that doesn't happen very often. Let's have a look at her. Kiki took the earpiece from her bag and handed it to the clerk. He briefly inspected it. It's just... Kiki hesitated. I don't know what to do. A look of concern crossed Reggie's face. You may be having a difficult morning. Has it been active long? Years, Kiki replied. Reggie let out an extended whistling sound. <sighs> it can be tough, the adjustment. Adjustment, Kiki stammered. Can't you fix it? Me, the man laughed. I'm a vendor, sweetie, a salesperson. 
we'll have to send it away to be repaired, and that could take up to five days. Days! Kiki couldn't process what she was hearing. The feeling of panic intensified in her chest. But what do I do now? She didn't expect an actual response to this question, but Reggie decided to give her one anyway. Maybe, he said, slowly taking his own infinity earpiece from his ear as he did. You could take this opportunity to do something. He leaned even further forward now, closer than Kiki found comfortable, as if he wanted to whisper something to her. Impulsive. Kiki didn't do impulsive. She hadn't done impulsive in years. How about, Reggie continued, you come with me to a bar later. Trust me. If there's anything you need after being plugged in for years, it's to let your hair down and relax. Kiki didn't know what to say. Had Finny been here, she would have anticipated the interaction and interacted with the clerk's infinity system to decide what the outcome might be. She would either have cleared Kiki's schedule or recommended that she politely decline as she had other professional or recreational things to attend to. In fact, had Finney been with her, she never would have ended up in this ad hoc situation at all. Kiki, however, was in the habit of agreeing to whatever suggestion was whispered in her ear. Uh, she stammered, I mean, okay, if you think it's a good idea... You are the mastermind, after all. Exactly, Reggie replied. He proceeded to scribble something on a slip of paper. This is the number for the store. We have your details on the system and will ring you when your infinity system is back online. He pressed the paper gently into Kiki's hand. The number below is mine. I finish at five if you want to take me up on that drink. Are you at work today? <gasps> work. She was supposed to be at work. Without Finney to remind her, she had forgotten to go to work. Muttering her thanks, she turned and ran out the store, sliding the scrap of paper into her pocket as she did so. He can be such an asshole, she said, or rather screamed to her new friend over the loud music and the jumble of voices. You ought to see Gina at the store when she's having a bad day, Reggie yelled back to her. Jeez. He shook the ice in his glass back and forth and asked, Another? More decisions. Kiki looked at him blankly. Another, he decided for her, and disappeared into the swarm of bodies converging around the bar. The rest of the day hadn't gone as smoothly as usual. Her boss hadn't been happy about her tardiness, which was typical. Late once in three years, and there's hell to pay. He hadn't listened when she tried to explain about her infinity system and insisted she had to make up the hours later in the week. By the time her shift was over, she needed a drink. Now the buzz of alcohol was starting to numb her around the edges and blur the moments one into the other as they passed. At the same time, the tension she had been holding in her shoulders began to seep away. She stopped tapping her foot out of anxiety and started tapping along with the music. Reggie returned with another drink. This was a good decision, she thought, as she took the cocktail from his hand. I think this is just what I needed, she told him, sinking back into the chair. She took a sip and watched as the alcohol dulled the world around her. Later, as the room swayed with the music, he led her into the shifting mass of bodies to dance. The crowd provided a shield of anonymity, and the alcohol eased her inhibitions. For a while, it all felt so easy as she threw her limbs around and twisted to the rhythm. Each movement a decision that she made without care, not one of them productive. She chose to throw her head back, to spin, to sway. She chose to buy another drink and to sing the words of a song she loved. She chose to take Reggie by the waist and kiss him as the bodies writhed around them and the fog of alcohol warped the world around her. She woke up with a headache, feeling tired and aching. Her memories of the evening before were dim and semi-formed elusive vapors that disappeared whenever she tried to look directly at them. She knew from the pounding in her temples and the taste in her mouth that she had drank too much. She had certainly slept in her own bed, but she distinctly remember kissing the clerk from the Infinity Store. This much was confirmed when she checked her messages. Had fun last night, the first message read. Pop into the store on Saturday to pick up your infinity system. 
or sooner if you want to see me. Not for the first time, Kiki realized that she had no idea what it was she wanted. She usually had someone to spell that out to her. She was used to going on dates, of course. These were usually, who was she kidding, for the last few years always, set up by Finney. They didn't always last, but were optimally matched to improve her mood whether they lasted a few weeks or many months. When Finney told her that this or that person was no longer serving her best interest, she was able to let go without too much dismay or heartbreak, knowing without a doubt that it was the right decision for her. Now she was on her own. She knew that some creep that hit on her at the Infinity Store probably wasn't the sort of person Finney would connect her with, but she was feeling lost and having someone to support her with this didn't seem like such a terrible thing. This Reggie guy was confident. She hadn't once seen him deliberate last night. He always seemed to know what to do next, and that was something that appealed to her right now. In any case, she had a few days to think about it and more pressing decisions to attend to, like what she was going to do today, for instance, ignoring the queasy feeling that came with this thought. She rolled over and prepared to get out of bed. One thing she was definitely going to do today was go to work. Well, maybe after just five more minutes. Kiki slithered through the next few days in an unsure stupor. Work, it turned out, was a relief, because at least there she was told what to do. Her inability to make decisions, however, meant her productivity was suffering and people, including her boss, were starting to notice. At least without an infinity system to track her productivity, they had no hard evidence to prove this. Outside of work, however, was another story. She'd skipped breakfast for two days in a row, having not left herself enough time to get ready in the morning. There was still a pool of coffee staining the kitchen surface that she hadn't got around to cleaning. She found herself at one point in a corner store, having just bought a packet of cigarettes. Luckily, she still had enough motivation to resist smoking them. Evenings were even more daunting. She didn't know whether to read, to catch up on emails, to ring her friends, to exercise, to practice the piano. For the last two nights, she ended up watching TV, feeling like she should be doing something else. On more than one occasion, it occurred to her that she didn't have to do any of the above at all. She didn't have to stay in her apartment, or at her job, or even in the city. She could, she realized, do something entirely new. With these thoughts, however, came an acute sense of panic. At least she would have Finney back before the long, empty chasm of the weekend, she thought. On the third night of this indecision and monotony, she found she couldn't take it anymore. She left her apartment again in search of someone to make decisions for her. Back to the familiar futurism of the Infinity Store, she heard his voice from across the room as she was entering. He was with a customer a young, frazzled-looking woman. Maybe, he was saying, you could take this opportunity to do something impulsive. Kiki was halfway across the store before she stopped in her tracks. Wait! The woman looked at him, doe-eyed and lost. Maybe, he continued, you'd like to come out with me tonight. Trust me, there's nothing better for someone who's been plugged in for years than to let their hair down and relax a little. Back in her apartment, she buried her head beneath her duvet. It was a line. She felt so stupid. She never would have fallen for something like that had Finney been whispering in her ear instead of that jerk. Come to think of it, she never would have fallen for that a few years ago before Finney had come into her life. The only decision she could make after that was the conscious decision for unconsciousness. She went to sleep. She had muddled through the days that followed and eventually replied to Reggie to tell him she wanted her device delivered. It meant she would have to wait an extra day, but at least she wouldn't have to see him. Now here it was, on the table in front of her. She had finally caved and opened the cigarettes. It was probably her last chance to smoke before she turned Finney back on. She didn't know what to do. With Finney, she felt safe. She was free to enjoy whatever it was she was doing, knowing she was doing precisely the right thing at that moment. Without her, she felt untethered, unsure, constantly questioning herself and the decisions she made. But at least she knew her decisions were her own, and she was controlling her own life. 
one decision was radically liberating and the other freed her from anxiety of this unbearable liberation. She didn't know which freedom was worse. Eventually, the silence of her indecision was punctured by a familiar, soothing voice. Good afternoon, Kiki. You've been managing awfully well without me. How about we start to get things back on track? And now for the discussion questions. Number one. Is the process and experience of making choices more important than making the right choices? Does it matter if some of the choices you make are the wrong ones? Number two. Is there really any harm in offloading less important questions to a machine so as to focus on making better decisions regarding important questions? Number three. If you had the chance to use the infinity system, would you? Why or why not? Number four, does it matter that the infinity system only suggests or reminds you of a better course of action? You will have the free will to not follow the suggestion. And number five, how is the infinity system different than an online calendar? cloud-based reminders, and to-do lists, and other productivity tools. You've been listening to The Freedom Machine, written by Remy Martin. Next week, we'll be reading I Do So Like Dorian by Jan Everard. If you enjoyed this story, head over to our companion podcast, After Dinner Conversation Discussions, and listen to our discussions of this and other short stories from our magazine, we will include a link in the description. And of course, you can always continue the discussion on our webpage in the comment section or on our Facebook page. Thank you for joining us. And until next time.